Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Looks like we're going to get started. <clears throat> well, as you know, my name is Bryn Petch. I'm going to do this again today. <laughs> Um, as a member of this congregation, I'm happy to welcome you to Millwoods United Church. Uh, this morning, some of us are here in person, uh, while others participate live on Facebook. Each Sunday, we gather to share and celebrate and discuss our sacred values and to confront the mysteries of life and love. Uh, we welcome you no matter where you may be in your spiritual quest or journey. Seekers, doubters, questioners, and believers are all welcome here. We also welcome you regardless of your sexual orientation, gender identity, or cultural background. As an affirming congregation, we work to make the church a place where we all feel safe, or where we all, yeah, we all feel included and safe. Uh, we also acknowledge this land, this building in Southeast Edmonton, is on the traditional territory of Treaty 6, a traditional meeting ground, gathering place, and traveling route for many Indigenous peoples. We honor and recognize the rich artistic and cultural spiritual traditions of the Cree, Nakota Sioux, Métis, Diné, and Salto, and many more indigenous communities that call this land we share home. Whenever we find ourselves, or wherever we find ourselves this morning, let us remember the people that have cared for this land over thousands of years. All of us are treaty people, and for that we give thanks. Friends, I am glad we can be gathered today Every day at this church, people join in, reach out, and make a difference. Um, to read more about the work of our church and upcoming events, you can subscribe to our e-newsletter, What's the Buzz, on the church website. Uh, this e-newsletter is put out every Thursday. Um, does anyone have any announcements to make this morning? Again, nothing. All right. Uh, if you do have an announcement that you'd like to uh, be heard next Sunday. Uh, let the office know before Friday. Um, thank you to uh, Ryan for the music today. <laughs> Doing it well, I wouldn't say solo. We have a lot more. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, I welcome Dale, who will be leading the service for us today. Thank you. Warm welcome to all of you, and especially to those of us who are joining us online today. We're glad that we're all worshiping together. Uh, Bruce, would you please stand up? You're the Bruce. <laughs> this is the guy behind the scenes that, that we don't... He's another, another member of our team, Bruce McCarran. Um, and I knew he was going to be in church today, and it dawned on me that many people may not even know who this man is. So, Bruce, thank you for your work. We're glad you're with us today. He's, he's actually a member of another congregation, but you, you, how many congregations do you take care of? Four, yeah, plus other things. So, uh, And now I have a very important announcement, uh, a scam alert. If, and I'm serious now, if you receive an email from Dale Johnson saying that I'm going to be in meetings all day, so you can't reach me, but you need to send me money through gift cards, don't do it. We've, somebody in the congregation lost $600 uh, last week, and two weeks ago or three weeks ago, uh, Rob got a scam like this, but he called me first thing in the morning. He said, Dale, what's going on? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> so, so just be aware, it's not me. Um, and if you have any questions, no matter it says don't call, call. Call the church call my home, call my cell, um, yeah, because it, it, we don't want to lose any more money. Hopefully, the bank's going to uh, come back and help this person that, that lost the money, but uh, yes? I also have emails from Lily Arnold all the time. The pictures, do not open those. Yeah. So, somebody's, somebody's hacking into us, so... Excuse me? Is that right? Uh-oh, Don. <laughs> so, so just be aware of, of all that. And, but especially if you hear something from me and it's an emergency and you need to send money, don't do it. 
um, call me uh, if you have any questions. Okay, take a deep breath, put the scams aside, <laughs> feet on the floor. Jesus said, come to me all who are weary and whose load is heavy, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble-hearted, and you will find rest for your souls. Let us come and worship together. Let us remain seated as we sing the centering hymn, Open Our Hearts. So we're continuing our new tradition of the Lenten Tenebrae. Tenebrae is darkness, so we're walking into the darkness as we approach Good Friday. We have uh, started with six candles plus the Christ candle. Um, and each Sunday, this is the fourth Sunday in Lent, uh, we extinguish one more candle. Listen to these words. Though we yearn for great vision, Many of our visions are limited. Yet we do not know just how limited we are spiritually. We do not know that we do not know. Content to live with illusions and self-delusions, the people of this world do not even want to know wisdom and truth. As Prophet Joel said, when the leaders lack vision, it is the people who suffer. We suffer from narrow leadership, compromised integrity, and self-centered values. We experience the suffering of God's people on our streets, in shanty towns, in refugee camps, and in every neighborhood. Let us remain seated as we sing, Don't Be Afraid. Pray together. O oh God, we long for enlightened leaders to emerge who have the audacity to hope and to declare truth we long to receive. How long must we wait? How long must we suffer? Or are we the ones who are to embrace the visions and possibilities? Then open our spirits for us to embrace your truth. Open our minds to receive your vision. Open our hearts to widely, generously, and deeply. May our face shine through us, and may we experience your kingdom on earth. Amen. Our gathering hymn this morning is actually one of my favorite, and it's a familiar tune. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Let us stand and sing together.
as Moses took off his shoes when he approached holy ground, so we too, holy one, remove those things that burden us, that get in our way, that hold us back, that make us want to build walls to keep others out. We remove all of these things as we join together in the presence of all that is holy. Amen. Now, I wonder if any children would like to join me, and I have some friends with me today. You want to join me up front? Come on. Come on down. There she is. Come on down. We've got a problem right here in the bear neighborhood. We have a big problem. There's a puppy in the bear. Well, like puppy bears, yeah, they they but this is the black side. And this is the white side. And the, Blacks don't want anything to do with the white, and the white is going, what's wrong with me? What did I do? And I'm not sure what we can do about that. However, there's another person that's going to join them. Now, this is going to be interesting. Whose side is this one going to be on? It's, it's going to be on the white side. It has more white. In the middle. Yes, just like a good United Church person. <laughs> right in the middle. But, but not only that, come and join me in the middle. You can, you can come and join me in the middle. And, and guess what? The dog and the bear, they could, we can all join in the middle. But he has more white on it, so he doesn't have anybody on the white side. Well, he doesn't care. He wants to be everybody together. I've got some, I've got some slides to show you here. Look at this. I'm going to read this for you. It says that these are Labrador retrievers. They come in a variety of colors. They are loved and treated equally no matter their color. They don't fight with each other over their color differences. When it comes down to it, they're all labs. They're all dogs. Dear humans, do better. Be better. Dear bears, do better. Be better. Be more like the labs. And we have another. Oh, look at this one. Our job is to love others without stopping to inquire whether or not they are worthy. And a final slide. All the way from Mexico. You can guess who sent this to me. Uh, I have no idea it's, who sent this. It was, I'm going to Mexico. Um, I heard you were going to Mexico. <laughs> Yeah, see, I told you so. So Rob, Rob sent this. Rob McPhee, he was in Sayita, Sayita. And he saw this sign and he thought of our church. It says, welcome, all sizes, all colors, all cultures, all genders, all beliefs, all religions, all ages and types, all people, love lives. Maybe we should put that sign out in front of the church. What do you think? Yeah? Oh, okay. Now there's a song we're going to sing. It only takes a spark. Let's see the, let's see the first verse of this. It only spike, takes a spark to get the fire going, and soon all those around will warm up to its glowing. That's how it is with God's love once we experience it. So I think we need to stand as we sing this together. is.
okay, you can go off to Sunday school and have fun, and the bears will go back here and help me preach. How's that? Now, according to this, Wendy McNutt is supposed to talk to us today, but I don't see Wendy. So I guess we're not having a This Is Us today. So there we go. That means we need scripture reading. Oh, he says, I'm on. Let us pray. May our hearts and minds be open so that we listen to the words of the ancient scripture so we might find wisdom for our living today. Amen. No one can serve two superiors. You will either hate one and love the other or be attentive to one and despise the other. You cannot give yourself to God and money. That, you've, been, you've been given the wrong scripture. Uh, that's not seven, one to six. Uh, <laughs> and that's not your fault. <clears throat> Is there a Bible handy? Somebody got a Bible? <laughs> There's not a Bible in the church? <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> I thought this one was for me. It talks about a two by four. And... Would you run, <laughs> run to my office? On my desk, you will find a Bible. It's a big paperback one. My gosh, what is it? The United <laughs> Church without a Bible? Who, I only who, read what I'm told to read. Uh, well, <laughs> you are, except yeah. that it's not right. That was, that was last week. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah? No, that's what, that's oh. what he's reading. I got it. Got it. I got it. I got it. All right. Can you read that? I can get it. It's, yeah. it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty small, and uh, it's not just read through this one here. So down through there. So start here. Yeah, and go to there. Yeah, just to the. Okay. Sorry about that. Hmm. Oh, yeah. See, this one. This one seems more. Okay. <clears throat> Don't judge, or you yourself will be judged. Your judgment on others will be the judgment you receive. The measure you will use will be used to measure you. Why do you look at the splinter in your neighbor's eye and never see the board in your own eye? How can you say to your neighbor, let me remove the splinter in your eye, when the whole time there's a two by four in your own? Hypocrite, remove the board from your own eye first, and then you'll be able to see clearly to remove the splinter from your neighbor's eye. Don't give dogs what is sacred. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they'll just trample them underfoot, then turn and tear you to pieces. Ask that's and it. keep asking. No, that's it. That's you'll receive. That's, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, very that's good. good. We good got then. through it. <laughs> yes. Or I guess. <clears throat> Hear what the Spirit is saying to you this morning. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. Through this and not through this. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That was fun.
Would you pray with me? Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditation and reflection of each and every one of our hearts be truly graced and blessed by you, the one who has created us, the one who teaches us, and the one who sustains us. Amen. So this is the fourth installment in a five-part sermon series entitled Lent on the Mountain, and we're looking at the Sermon on the Mount, chapters 5, 6, and 7 of the Gospel of Matthew. The Sermon on the Mount is focused on Jesus' view of ethics and discipleship. During the Lenten season, we have the opportunity to look more closely at our own lives and begin the process of spiritual self-assessment, asking ourselves very difficult questions. Am I living in a way that reflects my faith and the teachings of Jesus? Is that even possible in this day and age? How, may, how might I change to better reflect the God of love that Jesus seeks to reflect in the Sermon on the Mount? And after a couple missteps, we are talking about judgment today. So. When I worked in a psychiatric hospital in North Carolina, I had a wonderful patient, uh, schizophrenic, um, had other labels as well. And he had this great fantasy that he was God. And he would walk around, and if somebody looked at him wrong or he didn't like them, he would go, you're going to hell. He just loved snapping his fingers and go to hell. Judgment. Judgment. Judging others, uh, we know, uh, has a powerful and it has a negative effect on the people being judged. It is damaging. It makes it difficult for people to trust others when they have been judged. It makes it nearly impossible to risk being vulnerable when you feel like you have been harshly and even cruelly judged. Now, during this uh, Lenten uh, season, uh, we've been having a Lenten book study. And during that study, we've been ex exploring uh, five theological categories that are included under the big tent of the United Church of Canada. The five categories are evangelical, uh, the, when the focus is on spreading the gospel, ecclesial, and the focus is on the church community, like we have here, Missional, focus on, on reaching out and caring like we do on Saturdays in, in the Red Run. Ecumenical, the fo focus is on social justice, like uh, uh, working towards reconciliation. And spiritual, focus on being open to and experiencing and encountering God and the Spirit anywhere and everywhere throughout life. Now, in some ways, this study has confronted me with my own biases. Uh, biases that have emerged from my own experiences and perceptions. Specifically, the study has clearly revealed my bias against the evangelical theological faith perspective. And the core issue for me is judgment. As a progressive Christian and a gay man of faith, who grew up in an evangelical tradition, I have felt the painful reality of being judged by those stuck on a simplistic, literal interpretation of the Bible. Those who use words in the Bible to justify and express their own bias and bigotry. Make note, the words being quoted are not the words of Jesus. I have spent much energy hiding who I am and what I believe because I did not want to be judged. In a religious theological schema that puts a lot of value on who's in and who is out, I did not want to be on the outside looking in. But in truth, I was. For the way that evangelicals have treated me and progressives and others in the LGBTQ 
plus community, I have developed much antipathy. It is hard for me to see or hear anything good coming out of an evangelical perspective when I first and foremost hear judgment and rejection. The exceptions to that, interestingly enough, are some of the students that I had when I was teaching in Vancouver. At the hospital, I would get students not only from Vancouver School of Theology, uh, but from more conservative theological seminaries. And many of them were evangelical. And some of them were able to show me another evangelical perspective. Even, even they would get angry at some of the things that were going on in the evangelical church. So I don't want to paint a brush of all evangelicals here. However, progressive theology often prides itself in being tolerant and inclusive. Many evangelicals pride themselves in being intolerant and exclusive. It is no wonder I have a bias, and it is no wonder that many people have left the church today because of the judgment they have experienced or the judgment they have observed. My bias has become compounded as many evangelicals have been swept up in the mega-Republican movement, where intolerance is celebrated, racism and homophobia are extolled as virtues, and judgment of those who see the world differently than they do is severe and harsh. And sadly, there are many evangelicals in Canada that share the mega-Republican evangelical perspective. The latest target of mega evangelicals seems to be drag queens and transgender people. There is a mounting attack on drag queens and cross-dressers. I, I read this morning about a bakery that had to close down somewhere in the States. Um, they were hosting drag shows and people started throwing rocks through windows and the, and the city council said, oh, we've changed the ordinance and, and, and your zoning won't allow this anymore. And so they're closing down. Uh, as demonstrations uh, are continuing to erupt and drag queens are trying to find a safe place, and if you accept or defend drag queens, and transgender people, then you are judged. You're judged, if you're in the States, and probably here too, you're judged as being woke. You're woke. Uh, according to the mega Republicans, woke is a liberal who will accept and support anything. Sounds like the United Church, doesn't it? From my perspective, woke is a person who works for justice, a person who has empathy and caring for others, even those who may be different from them. Governor DeSantis in Florida proudly proclaims that Florida is where woke comes to die. Now, my friends, if you look closely at the teachings of Jesus, including the Sermon on the Mount, I think that Jesus would appear to be quite woke. So that means, I guess, Jesus is not welcome in Florida anymore. I want to talk about ghettos a minute. A ghetto is uh, sometimes referred to as the ghetto is a part of the city in which members of a minority group live, especially as a result of racial, social, legal, environmental, and economic pressures. In Canada, Canada and the U.S. today, we often think of ghettos as being black and often poor and dangerous, often a place controlled by gangs and violence. But ghettos can be a safe place where marginalized or oppressed people share a neighborhood or a portion of a city where they feel accepted, not oppressed, not the focus of bigotry, not judged for looking, speaking, or acting different than the majority. We are all familiar with black ghettos, but there were in some places, and still are, Italian ghettos, Irish ghettos, Swedish ghettos, if you're familiar with Seattle, the old Ballard neighborhood it was a Swedish ghetto. Polish and Ukrainian neighborhoods right here in, in uh, Edmonton. 
Uh, and, and even today in Edmonton, there are neighborhoods where Filipinos are the majority and Tagalog is spoken, where Chinese people are the majority and either Mandarin or Cantonese are spoken, where Indo-Canadians are the majority and Punjabi or Hindi are spoken. These ghettos, these neighborhoods, have flourished and still flourish because they create a safe place for people who are in the minority, a place where they do not suffer abuse, a place where they are not ridiculed and bullied, a place where they are not judged. Neighborhoods like Millwoods gradually have become integrated with a mixture of ethnicities, beliefs, and lifestyles when people safe and feel safe enough to venture out of their ghettos. Many minorities, people who have experienced ridicule, bigotry, and cruel judgment, have ventured out of their ghettos and found places where they can live and flourish and grow. When judgment against others becomes socially acceptable and common, when racism, bigotry, xenophobia, and homophobia again begin to emerge and gain acceptance and are championed by churches, the question arises among vulnerable minorities, do we need to return to the safety of the ghetto? Jesus says, the judgment you give is the judgment you receive. He calls upon his followers to look closely at themselves, to take the board out of their own eye before they seek to take the splinter out of their neighbor's eye. How can you say to your neighbor, let me remove that splinter from your eye when you have a two-by-four in your own eye? You hypocrite, he says. He calls us to stand up against those who are quick to judge others, quick to exclude or ostracize others. Quick to be intolerant of people, of beliefs, of lifestyles that are different from their own. Affirming congregations like Millwood's United Church are safe places. At their best, they are as safe as a ghetto. They are a place where people are accepted and affirmed, supported and encouraged, where racial, radical hospitality, not intolerance, is the rule of the day, and a place where vulnerable people will find solidarity and allies in their fight against judgment, oppression, and hate, in their fight for justice. This is the way church should be. The disciples that Jesus was speaking to on the Sermon on the Mount would find a spiritual home in these churches, for these churches at their best reflect the Spirit of God as seen in Jesus. They reflect compassion and love, not hate and bigotry. They reflect a passion for justice, not a desire to impose our perspective on others. They reflect a spirit of inclusion and acceptance, not exclusion and rejection. But wait. In the season of Lent, we are encouraged to confess, to be honest with ourselves before God. And the truth is, my friends, Sometimes it's just downright uncomfortable to be part of a church that's so tolerant and accepting. A part of us looks at a visitor or a new person and wonders, is this a he, a she, a they? Uh, does this person uh, like the opposite sex or, or the same sex? Or does it matter? Do we invite this person to the men's breakfast? Or, or, or would, we, would they be more comfortable associating with women? Clearly, this is not the church of our childhood. This is not the society and culture of our childhood. So f in faith, we seek to follow the teachings of Jesus, the one who reflected the spirit of compassion and justice. And in the midst of our questions and without judgment, we welcome the person before us. For God knows they've already suffered enough judgment in their lives. Amen.
our song of response today is a, a song that talks about reaching out beyond ourselves. When, we, when hands reach out beyond divides, it's number 169, and more voices let us stand and sing together. It's that uh, time in the service when we take a minute and we remember the blessings we receive and a chance to share our gifts, our treasures with others. And there's many ways that we can do that. I think we have some slides here. We can do it uh, through PAR, pre-authorized remittance, through EVE transfers, credit cards, check. We even take cash, checks. And no, we don't take more, no more jewelry. No more jewelry. January, we'll take jewelry again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you're invited to give your time, treasure, talent, however that best works for you. Will the rush ushers please receive our morning offering? I invite you to stand as you are able and let us sing together grateful.
Holy One, we give you thanks for the many ways you touch and bless our lives. And today we share our gifts, our blessings, our time, treasure, and talents. Receive these offerings and gifts. May they be transformed into, transformed into acts of compassion and justice within this community and the world. Amen. Please be seated. It's a time where we prepare ourselves for prayer. In order to do that in our congregation, the tradition is to share blessings and joys and concerns. And we have a hand up over here. Who's got the microphone? Hi, everybody. It's good to be back. First, it's the first day of spring tomorrow, which is great. And tomorrow I get my long-awaited appointment with my, uh, my CPAP uh, guy. Oh, good for you. Yeah. So I'm really happy about that. Thank you. Good. You know, I'm glad tomorrow's the first day of spring, but I heard that the cherry blossoms are out in Vancouver. <laughs> and I look out, and I don't see any cherry blossoms here in, in Edmonton. So, so. Are there any other, other joys or concerns? Yes, sir. Yeah, Don. Uh, I'd like to uh, ask for prayers for the police constables that were killed. On Thursday, performing their jobs and their families. Thanks. <laughs> This is going to be a little bit long. <laughs> Luis, my son, the oldest son, he, when we moved to North America, he was 13. And he really went through difficult times, going to the school, no English. Uh, and due to that and something else, at the, when he finished high school, he decided, I'm not going to do any schooling. So basically, it was a hard thing for me. I'm us in the family, and, but now, he decided to go in his way, starting, starting from the bottom at the Home Depot. At last, he went up. up. He was really, really, really doing really hard. And finally, he got the assistant manager position like six months ago. And this week, last week, he got the bonus and all stuff. And this is not about money. It's about seeing him happy, extremely happy, because he was able to overcome all the fight. And last week, he realized, I did it. I made it. And that made us absolutely happy, because it has been difficult. His life has, for us, I think that it has been difficult for the whole family. But for him, it was the most difficult. So I really want to share that with the, with the church, because he good. was here. That's good news. Yeah. you got the microphone. I do. It's, it's a miracle. Is it on? Yep. I feel very, very blessed today. There's an organization called Victoria's Quilts, which Sherry is a part of. And today, Sherry gave me a quilt from Victoria's Quilts that is for people who have cancer. And my husband received one of these quilts when he was going through cancer. And now I have a beautiful one. It's being put up before you, behind you <laughs> with a That's visual it. aid. That's it. It's made by several people, and I feel very, very grateful. And every time I put it all over me, which will probably be every night and every morning, um, I'll think of the love that was put into it oh, to help that? me through my journey. Yeah. Thank right. you, Sherry, for yeah. being the hey, gifter yeah, the of that yeah. to me. I appreciate it so Great. much. Thank you. Uh, when I was working in the hospital, I'd, I'd go see a patient that I'd seen quite a bit, and I walk in the door, and, and, and uh, she says, every time I see you, you make me cry. I said, well, that's what I get paid for, isn't it? <laughs> so I guess we're okay today. <laughs> uh, as we prepare folks for a time of a prayer, uh, 
Let us sing verse 2 of Dust and Ashes, Touch Our Face. Please remain seated as we sing. mighty comforter. We lift up before you today the family and friends of the two Edmonton police officers who were killed in the midst of doing their job last Thursday morning. Be with those who grieve. Be with the police colleagues who every day risk injury or death simply as they do their job. And we pray for those caught up in domestic violence, especially for the victims. Hear our prayers, O God. Holy One, source of love, we have called, you have called us to hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good. You have called us to reflect your presence and spirit in our lives by embracing compassion and justice. We pray for strength this day to stand up to those who would dole out bigotry, homophobia, and hate in the name of faith and religion. We pray, for the, we pray for courage to stand with those on the margins, with those who are the target of religious or faith-based abuse, and we pray that our hearts may indeed be open enough so that those seeking acceptance, those who are different from us, those seeking refuge may find a home with us, a place where they may grow and flourish and become all you created them to be. Hear our prayer, O God. And we pray for those within our own community of faith today, for our children, for those who surprise us and those who touch our hearts with their struggles and grief. Those who struggle to find acceptance, <clears throat> those who struggle with being tormented and judged. We pray for those among us who are struggling with illness, who live with cancer or other life-threatening or life-altering conditions. We pray for Peter who continues on his path of recovery in rehab, and we pray for those who live with anxiety and depression and those who walk in grief. Hear our prayers, O oh God. And now be with us as we sing the prayer of Jesus.
our closing hymn today is one of the most popular hymns in the United Church of Canada. I, the Lord of sea and sky. Let's see if we can get to it and if there's a, through it, and if there's a tear in eyes, so be it. Let us stand and sing, I, the Lord of sea and sky. My friends, as we prepare to leave this place, may you always remember that you're held by a love that will never let you go. For in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We're not alone. And as we walk into the world that awaits us, may we have the heart, the eyes, the faith to see the face of Christ in everyone we meet, and may everyone we meet see the face of Christ in us. May it be so when we walk from here.